You're listening to Dave and Chuck the Freak's Tasty Bits Podcast. We'll start with this. The idiot criminal of the day. Police in Louisiana made a bizarre discovery when they came across a house that was abandoned right in the middle of a road. (laughs) The house was on the back of a trailer being hauled by a truck. Police put the photo on Facebook. The house looks huge. Doesn't appear to be split up like houses usually are when they're being trucked around. It was completely blocking both sides of the roads, and in its wake, there was a string of damaged mailboxes, road signs, trees, power lines, and poles. It was just destroying everything in its way. Wow. The police arrested the 46-year-old homeowner and an accomplice for criminal damage to property, violating a local ordinance and obstruction of a highway, They say this is part of an ongoing situation with the homeowner who was told he would need permits to move a house like that, but he just ignored it Uh, and figured, I can do it by myself. Permits? Hell no. (laughs) See, I I I didn't think... (laughs) I can move it myself. What the hell? Permit, shmermit. I didn't think you could just move a house by yourself. You'd have to call someone. Right. Who's like, job this is. He just picked the whole thing up. Somehow, how? I don't even know. How do you get know. it even on the trailer? I don't even know. How do you get a dude. house on a trailer? <laughs> I don't know how it's balanced so perfectly. I don't know. They were smashing into mailboxes and stuff. Telephone poles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a- it's bizarre. Is it like a drunk move? Move my house. Yeah. I yeah, I don't trip. know. <laughs> we can I do got it. friends. We can do <laughs> it. I don't see why I need paperwork involved. <laughs> I measured. I took like a rub. I like stepped off. You're telling me every one of these houses, everybody had to fill out all kinds of paperwork getting there? Forget I don't get so. that. I do not mm-hmm. think so. I walked from here to the other side. It's like 30 steps. I, I don't, don't know. want to live in a country where you can't oh, move a house. Look at this guy's face. How could he have ever come up with that? I don't know. How did he make that happen? He had to have help. Yeah, he had some That's help. That's who he had to help yeah, him. Yeah, it's not I great. It's know. dumb and dumber. What's up yeah. with his nose? Well... I don't. Been broke several times. Yep. <laughs> you probably, think I ain't been probably punched? Probably house fell on it. It's not great. It's not the best. Stop it. Does he have a dick tattoo on his nose? Oh, uh, wait. It looks like what it. Does you guys, he, he have? looks like he has a wiener tattooed on his nose. Dick nose. What is this guy? What, is what has he done? Did the cops draw it on there. That's a good <laughs> eye, Dave. You think this guy just got cut on the nose in such a way and it just it looks like two balls look? in a shaft? Because it's not perfect enough to be. Well, that would be bad luck. <laughs> I feel like it is. <laughs> I got I a feel dick like cut it was. right on my nose. <laughs> it's like, uh, hey, we healed up your nose. <laughs> just to let you know, though, it looks remarkably like a penis. His expression makes more sense. It does. Yeah, I got a dick on my nose. <laughs> if I had a dick on my nose, I'd be moving my own house. No time to go. <laughs> Gotta get, Gotta out get out him here. dodge. The other guy's like, he's the leader. <laughs> <laughs> I followed him because of that dick on his nose. <laughs> trying to help him out. But we know the, do we know the guy's name? Yeah. Yeah, like Nico. Do you Como. think he has, do you think he has Como. anything else? Yeah, he might be this. Like an Instagram? Like if he... Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I need to see if this guy has a signal. That's him, right? Oh, boy. I don't know. That's his MySpace. That's him. That's totally him. Oh, my him. God. That's his MySpace. Oh, my God. Look at his douche pictures on his MySpace. Well, he was so young then. <laughs> it's hard. The MySpace photos are so blurry. It's hard to tell if he yeah, has the they were, tattoo. I don't see it. Life. No, that can't be him, right? That's Dick McKay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing male porn star. How many people have that name, though? Not many. Not many. Oh, boy. Wait a There's second. There's a lot of joshing around. There seems to be a few joshing around. This guy doesn't josh around, does he? <laughs> I don't know. I can't t- this comment on might- this man's sexuality. These are just different men. They're not him. Okay. The joshers aren't him. Okay. This is, yeah, these are really his photos. Like him. I don't see a dick on his nose. So this is something that he's done. You guys, that is... 
That's a dick. Why would he do that? Someone says a thousand percent. It's a big old penis. He did that on purpose. He, he come on, look there. Oh, that's like even. It, it looks so. It looks like he did it himself with like some kind of hot gun. You think he fell asleep and someone did it to him? Passed <laughs> <laughs> out on drugs. Or you, yeah, like on. You'd have you to be on drugs like- for me to br- brand a <laughs> penis on your nose. <laughs> Oh, my God. No, I think he voluntarily did this. I don't understand why. You can't or get how. in the mind of a man who moves his own house. I guess you can't, <laughs> right? I guess you can't. Anyway, they say it was part of an ongoing situation, uh, but they won't say what the cops did with the house that was just left abandoned in the middle of the road by old Dick Nose and his buddy. So they must have got to some point and realized we can't get by whatever this is. And they just said, I ah, forget it, leave it. They just left it. <laughs> they just abandoned it. They left it. a home. Forget it. I mean, there's like, it was in the ground, right? There's the utility box on the side of it. Oh, yeah. No, I don't know how they did any of this up to code. And it belonged to them. They didn't. It somehow yeah. belonged to one of them. Dick knows, I believe. No. The hmm. homeowner was told he'd need permits to move a house like that, and he just ignored it and tried to do it on his own. A bizarre tale. Like, the professional people, like, they've moved a space shuttle through full neighborhoods and not done as much damage as these two morons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but normally they, they say they normally split it down the middle, right? Yeah, yeah. They don't move the whole thing at right. once. Because you can't, as you can clearly yeah, see. As we've just learned. Well, when the Hoochie Hut comes to town, you can expect a little controversy. There is a new strip club about to open up okay. called the Hoochie Hut. I wondered what it was, if it was one of those coffee places. Oh. No, it's in North Carolina in uh-huh. Waynesville. But they're coming out of the gates, not pulling any punches. Okay. In fact, as they say, coming soon, it is not spelt C-O-M-I-N-G. Oh, wow. <laughs> they're being bold with it. Yeah. And that's pissing some neighbors off. Here's the story now. Take a listen. Here is the sign in question. I'm actually having to stand in front of half of it because some of the wording isn't suitable for broadcast. Future site of the Hoochie Hut. (laughs) The bright green sign appearing on this property off Old Balsam Road. 24-hour adult superstore and strip club coming soon, it reads. The advertisement raising eyebrows and concerns. It's not appropriate. I'm glad I don't have kids here. Rich Black lives just feet away. I'm right on the property line. Oh, oh you can see it there. So they didn't cover that we up. Are right next door. Black, worried about they financial impacts of right. the potential new business, did some online research. The only thing that'd be worse for lowering your property value would be next would be if you have a bad school district. Okay, it would be better if this was a sewer plant. Van. Are they worried the about their property also value at there? County's planning and it appears that way. It has to be more than 1,300 feet from the edge of the property. Black hopeful, it's a joke. Oh. He came across property owner Dustin Smith as he was Dustin. clearing the land. Smith, declining to go on camera, told us right now he's oh. using the land to store cars. Oh, an my extension God. of his vehicle this repair business. Saying. Smith, though, staying tight-lipped about future plans for the property. Our business registration search coming up empty. I don't think it's real. Myrna Campbell isn't buying it. It's just his his way of um, striking back at the uh, neighbor who questioned what his intent was for the property. The Secretary of Hunt Estates Homeowners Association calling the sign an act of retaliation after neighbors brought up issue with Smith storing cars uh, on the okay. lot. Our main concern is uh-huh. um, that regulations be followed and it be done properly if if he is going to use that as a place to store inoperable vehicles. Campbell says she's written a letter to the Haywood County manager on behalf of the neighborhood. Hoochie hut or not, Smith tells me he does plan on installing a privacy fence around his property. So he put up a sign that he's opening a really filthy strip club yes. just to piss off his neighbor <laughs> yes. who complained about him parking a couple of cars there. And yes. I, they believed it, I guess. Well, they I took think it to he, the news. I don't think that one guy's too hard to trick. <laughs> no, no, the first guy? <laughs> no, no. no. Guy pretty- well, I was trying to figure out whether or not that guy's his buddy. And he's now like 
pretending to be all upset about the because you know everyone else is like upset. I don't I don't know I'm trying to like everyone else in the value. town knows that yeah come on like there's cars parked all over the place I'm disappointed that it was just like re- like retaliation I wanted it so bad to be like that's my dream and it is just in dream state right now <laughs> what a place to put it. There's no, nobody around. It looks like it's that's in the why, middle of a trailer park. That's why yeah. you know that it's it's in the in the woods. But then the, again, yeah. it's a hoochie hut. I've seen them in worse places. Well, with wherever dreams, you can get some cheap land, you visualize them and then you execute them. <laughs> Few <laughs> pretty girls and a couple ugly ones. Free <laughs> daily peep show, all naked, all the time. <laughs> like that's if <laughs> that's just to piss off your neighbor. That's a pretty elaborate. I yeah, mean, I don't. Joke. It's. I mean, it's. Yeah. <laughs> well, my buddies work down at the sign place. That's exactly how it happened. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's, yeah. Don't maybe worry. I'll get you one of them signs. I'll just make it. I'll just make it. Mm-hmm. What do you uh, want it to say? All naked, all the time. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. <laughs> you got any funny like stripper lines like that they use all the time? A few yeah. pretty girls, a couple, couple ugly, ugly ones. ones. Yeah, that's too. on every when sign. When you say coming soon, spell it differently. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was on the fence that they was just going to be naked some of the time. And, all the and time. And put 24 hours like it'll never close. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and like the one chick's like, it's not real. <laughs> The other guy's like, I'm pretty sure it's real. I don't know where the <laughs> that guy was ready to. No, I think that guy was. I, I want to go back to the interview with that one neighbor to see what he said. Oh, that yeah. Because this guy. is the guy I'm trying to figure out whether or not he's like part of it. Concerns. <laughs> it's not appropriate. I'm glad I don't have kids here. Rich Black lives just feet away. Yeah. I'm right on the In property the line. Park. So it, literally, we are right next door. Black worried about financial. That's the guy he's he wants to piss off. Yeah, that's the guy who complained. Yeah, he wants, it must so he, be. He says it's he inappropriate. He probably it. means the sign is inappropriate. Well, or yes. he believes that they're actually he's going to build a strip club. There. Well, and the thing is, they could have chopped up his interview. Like he could have been talking about the cars that were parked there. Yeah, and they edited it. You know, and then they just were like, uh, "We'll take the out about the cars, and we'll just say." I don't know. I feel it's like hard that's to know what Rich they, Black thinks. <laughs> I think old Rich Black is. I. I don't. I, I think that they. Uh, <laughs> they kind of torment him in that neighborhood. It seems. I feel like they I wish Rich belong. Black. Yeah. Didn't live there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. No. He's. He's probably caused some trouble. Yeah. Wow. I feel like that guy that was like put the sign up. There's been several times where he's like, "Mind your business, Rich." <laughs> <laughs> It's like, I'm just trying to make my place <laughs> more expensive. So why have cars on it? Yeah, Dustin Smith, the guy behind it all. He's a character for sure. Well, he wouldn't come on camera. He knows. No, that's the, that's as close as they got to him. Yeah. There. Is that the reporter? Yeah, with that's the, the reporter umbrella? talking to him. Yeah. But I just don't know. Lost, I, I just don't know how much value is going to be added one way or the other. To the area where all of these guys live. Yeah, not much. I don't really think it'll change too much. No. Someone said there is actually a club like this in Arkansas in a trailer park, but you do have to bring your own booze and your own chair. <laughs> Fully legal operation. Of yep. <laughs> bring a sturdy chair. Because one of those big girls going to give you a lap dance. Oh, a recliner. Bring a recliner. Oh, yeah. If you have to wheel in there. Listen, what this guy did at a McDonald's, although it's another case of fast food rage to a certain degree, we've all thought of doing, I'm sure. And this man, uh, I believe it's done, but he was blockading a McDonald's drive through after refusing to pull ahead and park and wait for Isn't this his your move? double sausage. Isn't this your move? I've haven't thought you about claimed, it. Haven't you claimed this to be your move? I wanted you to. will not. You will not. No, I said that's what I'd love to do. Okay. I'd love to say, no, I'm not pulling forward. Oh. But then I don't want them to spit in my food, so I pull forward. Right. And then I wait and get angry. <laughs> but about 9.30 in the morning, 55-year-old Stuart Yates drove to his local McDonald's to order two breakfast meals. He was asked to pull ahead and park in one of the spots to wait for his order mm-hmm. because they were quite busy. He said, listen... I came here last week and I waited there for over 15 minutes and I'm not doing that again. Yeah. I'm not going anywhere until I get my food. He refused to move 
And since then, the drive through lane has been closed and the police have had to be called to the scene. Wait a second. He's still, He's still there? there. He's still there. He Dave? was there. At least 29 hours later was still there. Oh, hey, still, hey, waiting. still waiting. Still waiting. Still waiting for McDonald's his two sandwiches. Standoff. <laughs> A staff member said the other cars managed to reverse out, but he wouldn't move. We asked him to park ahead, and he wouldn't, so now he's just sitting there. He only wanted a small order, only would have taken us a couple extra minutes, but we just didn't have it ready. So now he's refusing to move. He wouldn't park. He wouldn't accept the food. He wouldn't accept a refund. Now he's there for over 20 minutes. This is when it first started. But he said he was standing by his intentions, and he will willingly hold up the drive through for a week if he has to to prove his point. This is like a man. This is his version of that falling down movie where the guy just loses it, like driving. And then he gets off on the highway. That's a great movie. You know, this is his falling down. He's just lost it because his food was ready. They tried to give it to him. I don't know what happened to him with that 15 minute order last time. It's like he went back to his house and his family had died in a horrible fire. Something Something happened. What makes you wait 29 hours? So is he just peeing in the car? Well, yeah, that, never probably in a bottle well, or a cup or I don't know. Be poop. They can't uh, tell him because he's in there. He oh. said, uh, "I don't know. Can they? they no, probably they could can't. I don't think with somebody inside the car, you can't tow it. Yeah, I'd be so true. furious behind him." Well, as of the next day at three p.m., this was nine thirty. Three p.m., he was still there, <laughs> and still the drive-through there? was still closed. There's no telling, Lise. I don't know how you get him out of there. People lose their minds at these fast food yeah, no, places. Yeah, no, they do. This guy said, I waited 27 minutes after pulling ahead, and I had to call them and remind them I was there. So after that, I've never moved again. I refuse. Yeah. I mean, you got to still play ball, though. That's it. Like, there's been times, I mean, they, they gave me the fear. I waited there. Nobody showed up. 27 minutes is a long time to wait. He said, now when I pull up, I say no. Listen, I waited once for 27 minutes and had to call you guys and remind you I was here. So, no, I'll just sit here and wait. Yeah, so he's one of these guys. He's one of those guys. when he gets his food, when they finally give it to him, he doesn't just say, you know what, I'm going to stay here for a week just to teach you a lesson. No, no, he goes. He just refuses to pull ahead. That's it. He's just waiting. I can understand it to some extent. I can. I said I've thought about it because I've also been the guy that I thought they forgot, right? Yes. I wasn't 27 minutes, but it was like almost 15 minutes. And, yeah, you know, it doesn't take that long to make anything there. Right. It doesn't. Mine's not like a like I'm enraged from it. It's more of like an abandonment issue. Yeah, it's like a fear, <laughs> a fear of abandonment. Yeah. yeah. Like it's a, I'm like, well, what if they don't? And I just sit there. They forgot about me. And I don't know I what don't was going on that day. Either. Two cars. So there's two spots to pull ahead. I pulled up, and a car pulled right up beside me. They gave him his food. He left. I'm still there. Another car pulls up. They gave, come out with their food. They left. I'm still there. Right. So at that point, you know some they've they've lost your order in the mix or whatever. And you're just teased. You see the employee come out with a bag. You're like, oh, finally. And yeah. they go to the other car. <laughs> and you see employee again with another bag. And then they go to the other car. Son of a bitch. Yeah, that waiting window is... Uh... That's, there's a lot of emotionally trying times sitting there. I think the further away they make you park to, the less your chances of being remembered are. Because sometimes there's like an initial spot that you can pull up to, but then sometimes they're like, can you go park over there okay. in those spots over there? I feel like that's when they're just putting you up to pasture. Bell, I don't know. I, I guess I've never gone through Taco Bell's drive through too much. I've realize. never seen them. They pull. don't have a pull ahead spot, do they? Or no. do they? Someone said there's a timer system for a reason. Never pull up ever. So is that what they're doing? They're just getting you off their yes, that clock, is cause right? Because you set back saw, their times. We saw the person like reach down and like put a tray down there to like activate the timer. They were trying to fool it into thinking they were oh. doing better than what they were. Mm. It's just like you got to just like be like, are you gonna are you gonna really tell anybody I'm over there? <laughs> You just have to get honest yeah. about it. I'm like, are you really going to tell anybody I'm going over that other window? And they're yeah. like, absolutely. I'm like, you promised? Yeah. Someone said I waited <laughs> 45 minutes after pulling ahead at a Taco Bell. Come on, though. Like, what's your, what, like, come on. Never again. I would never wait 45 minutes. Well, I mean, 
you just at what point do you get out of your car though and you go walk in and yeah. you're like hey i'll drive back around through the whole thing to me it's 10 minutes yeah I after 10 I'm, minutes i'm like are you yeah, serious this is enough but can we all agree as much as we'd like you can't cause a standoff in the drive yes of course like you can't refuse people are refusing to pull ahead a lot of people are texting us that's what they do they say no I can understand it. But weren't I, you I worried can. about getting boogers or yeah, snot or sorry about that. You, saliva you, or whatever? You have to See, be fine with eating spit. Every time I go through a fast food drive through the money I give them, I'm like, until that food is like open and I see it, I know that I'm just rolling the dice. Yep. KFC <laughs> asked me to pull around, literally forgot my order. I tried to go in, but they were closed and cleaning up for the night. <laughs> How long yeah. did he wait? I paid for it, though. Yeah. I paid already. Yeah, when you're in the line, they're still on the clock, so they need to get you your food. Once yeah. you pull out, you're not on the clock anymore, and that's why they don't give a damn. Yep. I think they're still busy serving everyone at the window, and yeah. they forget about you. But if I bought a bucket of chicken, and I'm thinking in my head, I'm going to get that bucket of chicken... And then I go knock on the door, and they've closed it and turned all the stuff off. I am red hot. I feel like these situations at a KFC turn deadly. Oh then they my could. God. Then you understand. Rate Dave and Chuck the Freak's Tasty Bits podcast on iTunes or Google Play. Subscribe now to Dave and Chuck the Freak's Tasty Bits podcast on iTunes or Google Play. I don't know if this is clever or cruel. As always, the internet is divided here. A guy in San Diego named John DeMaria built a remote control air horn to blast every time his neighbor's dog barks. He posted a video on TikTok to show how it works here. Dog, and the <laughs> damn thing barks. Non-stop. I mean, I roll over in my bed, in my own room, in my own house, and this damn dog barks at me. So I, I went ahead and built this uh, invention, the Dog Zapper 2000, and have a look. I hate the wife. <laughs> Laughing so it's not that funny. She just thinks he's the funniest guy of all time. Oh, oh my gosh. God. Fully self contained <laughs> unit, Port- portable, fully remote controllable, with a lithium ion battery. And- <laughs> That's how we're going to nip it. <laughs> It's not working. It's not, it's working. not stopping him. Dude's wife laughs just like that Muttley from those old cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> she. Their dog it. hates it. Oh, the dog is so mad. So my neighbor. So it's not clear if the air horn made a difference or not, but it sounds like it at least worked in a roundabout way. Once he started using the horn. The dog's owner came over to talk to him about it. Since then, he's been able to meet the dog, whose name is Zoe. So now they're friends, and he's hopeful that now she won't bark as much. Thank you. Is this for legal issues or? Who me? No. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Just Come on. All right. No, no, not at all. I just this has been building up forever. Wanting to meet this dog. Oh yeah, that's it. All right, girl. You gonna come say hi? Is she gonna be nice? Look out. Is she gonna be nice or is she gonna eat me? Come here, girl. All right. Hi, Zoe. Hi, Zoe. Oh, hi. That hi dog, just its job is to protect hey, that other house. All right. Hi, Zoe. You can tell. Good girl. Good girl. Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Come here, girl. Come on. Come inside. Good girl, Zoe. It's a German oh, shepherd. Its job. Hey. Is to See, she's my friend now. Good girl. Oh. All right. Hold on a sec. Oh, so they man. say it's it's worked out. She doesn't bark as much now, but she knows him. You know what's crazy? He he probably could have just like knocked on the knocked on the fence yeah. and been like, "Hey, man, your dog. It's just driving me crazy." Instead, he built a horn and did all that stuff passive aggressively to start a conflict instead of just meeting. Yeah, it is. We have a dog on our street that is left outside all the time. Mm-hmm. And barks and howls all the time. It's probably because why they leave it's outside. outside. No, it's barking because it's because yeah, it's outside. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Right? outside. So I know how annoying it can be. I mean, we're not next door. It's down the street, but you hear it. Though. Every time you're outside, you hear it. Right. Anytime my dog starts to bark, which is often, 
Please comes in. Right. Uh, <laughs> bring him in. Yeah. I don't want it to be annoying. No, because we're responsible pet mm-hmm. owners, right? We don't. Jameson will bark from inside the house as dogs go by. Yes. Sure. He's That's okay. window, like, F you, F you, F you. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> that's allowed. Not outside. At 83 years old, when you decide to make a career change, probably your options are limited. Yeah. But an ex-priest just decided to make a big career change. He became a porn star. That's, I don't know why this happens from time to time. They always end up having like successful OnlyFans and stuff because, oh, that guy. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> that is creepy. Creepy old man. Jeez. I'd hate to know what kind Norm. of porn he's making. Can you guess? Gay porn. Norm Self made a drastic <sighs> career move from priesthood to porn hub after he came out as gay and decided that he would like to become a porn star. You know what, though? At least you finally are living the life you're supposed to live, Norm. He's described the experience of having sex with strangers on camera as delightful and splendid. Mm -hmm. Uh, His first X-rated movie he made a few years ago. He said, my housemate asked me if I'd be in a film. I was invited in, and all of a sudden, all this attention comes to me. It was like having a party. I bet. My God. We were going to have sex anyway, so why not make it a liberating and bonding experience? He said, I decided that it would be something I would enjoy. He now, at 88, has a number of adult films under his belt. Uh, His latest one was in a rural setting. I guess they were down at the farm. This might be the same priest that I've heard about before. Seeing now that it's like been around for five years, years, yeah. Um, He said, "My problem with the church was sex is not treated as a joyous part of spiritual life." Well, and I'm sure like the gay sex part Mm. isn't treated very fondly either in the old. When asked if he would take part in more videos in the future, he said, absolutely. Have yeah, to share the good so news close. with all that will. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. Oh, God, Dave. Oh, no. Yeah, I know. Sorry. It it is. Some it's screen caps up so, in there. As long as we don't see any live action. No, and we're not going to. None of us Ooh. need that. Nope. No, no one needs that need in that their that life. Oh, God. Does he have no shirt on there? Yeah. He's, oh, wow. he's topless. This is the reverse. The last guy we talked about, he did the reverse, right? He was a porn star, a straight porn star, I think. Yeah. And then he went into... Found. Yeah. Yes. Oh. He became a priest. Yeah. So it can go both ways. Yeah. But I'll throw you for a loop when your priest becomes a gay porn star. <laughs> did you hear about our priest? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> He's a gay porn star now. <laughs> you always knew, kind of. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I assume it's like senior on senior. No, oh, that's not it. my guess. Senior gays don't want to see senior gays get it on with other no senior, senior gays? No senior gay wants to see. Senior gays are still men. And they, they want eye candy. Yikes. There's not a lot of senior women porn either. You know what I mean? Oh, there is. We've seen it. Yeah, no, there's seen some, it. but I mean, it's not the big seller. Uh. The big seller is young. How many senior women porns do you think are on Pornhub right now? I'd say millions. Oh, I no, I I agree. I agree that there are millions because there are the people that are into that like weird like. Oh, it's accurate. not old man and old lady. It's old Correct. lady with right. What am I look for? Senior sex. Hmm. I ho- I wish you wouldn't. <laughs> I mean, I don't senior. think you need to. Senior sex porn. Oh, Lisa, just watch. Mm. Yeah, but see, like, younger woman, yeah. two old guys. Younger woman, this old This one's called guy. Grandpa Can't Keep His Balance. Right? Well, he keeps, they're going to help. Oh, my God. Yep. First time with an old couple. Yeah, the majority have a younger yeah, person it's involved. like you know, Or a sex doll. Oh, my God. that The title of that one is horrific. What? I can't I do, Which no. one? No. Well, let me see it. No. Oh. <laughs> Horrible times. All right. Uh, from... Porn to sex stores. And there is a dude who's uh, 
racking up the views on TikTok with his humorous story spent working at a sex store. A male he's a sex store worker. Yep. And um, he's worked at a sex store and he's sharing his stories of his time there online. If you've done this, sex store, strip club, you know, whatever it was, if you worked in an adult type business mm-hmm. and if you have any kind of crazy story to share, you want to chime in. 1-855-954-6969, toll free. 1-855-954-6969. Weirdest time at the adult business you worked at. We'd love to hear it. So this dude here, his name is Peyton Dow. Um, he's from Chicago. He said, when you worked for an adult store for seven years and remember random stuff sometimes, in each of his clips, he details his encounters with kink craze customers and... They're getting, like, millions of views online. Here's the dude. That's him. Mm -hmm. Um, So he shared a video just the other day saying he once tried to stop a woman with a stroller from entering the store. I told her she couldn't bring the baby inside, obviously, but it ended up being her boyfriend in the stroller, he said. Oh. Hmm. It's a big stroller. Uh Unless it was a little boyfriend. <gasps> oh, no. Yeah, they both terrify me. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Both equally terrify me. Dave. Big stroller or little boyfriend. Yeah. Eeks. Yep. He said definitely was a kink. I didn't understand. I feel like when you work at a sex toy shop, you're some of the kinkiest people ever. I do feel like that. Like, you know, like you have to be kinky to, to even. There. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think like, they're really excited something. to tell you about the stuff. Yeah. There's something about you. You know, there's something going on. I'll tell you a story about petting a dog in a moment. But first, we have Crystal who's with us. Hi, Crystal. How are you? How are you? Good. You worked in an adult store. I did. And so you get after it. Pardon? So do you get after it or what? Well, I mean, what do you mean by that? Like, <laughs> you, well, he was saying you have to have, be a certain personality to work in an adult store. Like, you, you yourself would yeah. have to be kind of a kinky person, right? Well, for sure, yeah. I'm pretty open about stuff. Yeah. Okay, did you, sta- did you start out really open, or did working there open you up to New Horizons? No, I was kind of open before I worked yeah, there. Yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah. That's normal. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. what happened when you were working there? Well, a bunch of stuff happened, but the biggest one was it's illegal to bring stuff back after you use it, obviously. Uh, a dude came in with, like, a, a gift bag and brought out, uh, I guess, a vibrator, the one with the little bunny on it. Oh, yeah. And plopped it on the glass counter, crusty, dirty, nasty. Oh, and, well used. Well used. <laughs> and he wanted, he wanted a refund because part of it didn't work anymore. Well. So he used it up. Yeah, I was going to say, if you blasted that thing to oblivion. <laughs> Don't ever use the word crusty. Oh, man. Mm. Like that again. It was, it was, sorry, it was bad. So, like, okay, <laughs> let's just say I buy one and I take it home and it doesn't work. I can't return it? Or as long as I return no, it right it, away? As long as it's not used. If you return it right away, then that's that's a little bit different. But you can't bring something in used and, like, like here, I want another yeah, one. Yeah, like I, I, I bought this six months ago and... The yeah, bunny, the bunny good, ears though. stop. I'd go through so yeah. much spray Purell on uh, oh, everywhere. Man. <laughs> everyone touched when they were gone. Disgusting. Oh, yeah, it was fun cleaning that counter afterwards. Did you find that men were really gross to you, or um, I did have I did have a decent amount of phone calls asking for like uh, you know penis pumps and you know stuff like that uh, pocket things to play with. I had one call and asked if like there was one that he can attach to the underside of his desk. I talked to him for 20 minutes, and then he never showed up. Well, Imagine. don't you think he was just jerking off listening to you talk? Well, Probably. Oh, and I was actually, like, looking. Like, oh, this one seems good. I think you can attach this one. <laughs> yeah. No, good that's... Customer service. Yeah, yeah that you're amazing. amazing. I think they go above and beyond. Yeah, just stay on the line for 20 minutes with a pervert, <laughs> you're incredible. They go above and beyond. <laughs> Crystal, thanks for calling in. You have a good day. Thank you, you too. See ya. Uh, someone said, long before I was born, my mom worked at an adult store. Oh, man, I never want to find She out. ended up working there, though, just for one day. They asked her to mop up the peep show room, and she oh, quit. Oh, come on. Ooh, come on. <laughs> oh, that mop. 
all the children trapped in that mop. That, that, I'd learned something that day about my own mom. Like to even find out that my mom for one day decided she wanted to work at a sex shop. I'd be like, oh, wow. Yeah, she should have kept that to herself. You know, she should have. One day in her life. I remember there being a point in my life. It was like during the blockbuster times where I was like, "Eh, if if only I could get a job at a sex store. (laughs) I was like, that'll do it. That'll be the way to go. And there was like a really like couple really cool ones. I never got the job there. I didn't think I was. No. You weren't. You weren't. I wasn't the material. Material. Yeah, apparently, you I don't. The application. Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you tried. I tried to you get tried. in there. Yeah. That was were my two big dreams. I was like, either I was like, it's not going to work out if I don't work at this adult bookstore or family video. Yeah, yeah. That was where my career. Well, then you got the strip club gig, which is uh, yeah, that was later. Same, yeah, yeah like way later, but better. I would assume better than the adult bookstore. Yeah, 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 yeah. yes, right. it's so, much better. Yeah. Right. What did I just feel like? You'd meet the I the worst of people. I think I'd be feeling like bad. I would always was always looking for interesting. I, I'm going to be honest. It would be if, interesting. You're if right. I went into one of those places and it's a guy there, I'm instantly disturbed. Disturbed or like, uh, wouldn't it be more comfortable? Like no. you're not. Like you think no. the woman's judging you for the point. I don't you care wanna... that she's judging me. Uh, to me, like uh, a guy there, it's just more pervy. It's usually so. like like smoker lady type chicks whenever. Yes, right. Right. like they really get like after it. Shock them. Yeah, they, they've they like I've tried every it. single thing here six times. So Andrew's a dude that worked at one of these places. Mm-hmm. Andrew, what happened? Andrew. Well, let me tell you. I was 18 years old, uh, away at college, and got my first job. I can't even say what city or no. I don't uh, care. Yeah, yeah whatever, whatever city. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So so I'm working in Ypsilanti at a bookstore. Yep. And after about the first week there, it, you know, I, I had to clean out the viewing rooms. They said, oh, just mop it, give it a light wipe down. And I, it, it took me a while for two plus two to add up to four. And then constant gay guys coming in, getting dildos and different things from behind the counter that I had to get them. And they'd be touching each other in the face and slapping each other on the you know what. And after one week, I told my, my boss, I'm like, dude, I can't work here anymore. And then they says, well, you're a pretty good-sized dude. Um, why don't you come bounce up front in the club? But I, I couldn't take all the gay stuff that was for their girlfriend, you know, that was clearly two guys were buying it for themselves, right. but slapping each other with it, chasing each other around. like. Um, and and maybe that's why there's not a lot yeah, of guys man. working at the adult store. Well, I, I feel like if you're a guy, that's part of it, that you might be hired to be some kind of eye candy for certain people that are... Coming in there. Because I think there's that. There's either the real experienced people that work there or like the semi-attractive girls that have to be hit on just nonstop in there by pervs. Uh, This guy that started the conversation here with his TikTok, he said he had a woman ask if I wanted to pet her dog. He said, oh, oh, sure. And he walked outside. It was her husband on all fours on a leash. So like you pet him, you know, do you pet him? Uh, The grossest thing, though, he said that happened, and this is what he's saying, a girl removed her boyfriend's butt plug in the store after they purchased a new one and switched them out. Do you have a garbage? (laughs) Did you throw that in the garbage Yeah, do you have a garbage (laughs) behind there? Uh, Someone else said, I worked in an adult store that had a large bonded section. Mm -hmm. A guy came in asking for everything possible to chain someone up and gag them, and the vibes he was giving off were super creepy. You call you don't call the police, baby. Well, no, because it's just a, you know a, more times than not, it's just sexual. It's not like the guy in the basement, you know, where he kills somebody. That does happen. Yeah, mostly just freaky people. I worked at a strip club. Girl was dancing. She suddenly started pooping on the stage and didn't even realize it. That's a mood killer, isn't it? Yeah, it is. That's a the bouncers that's an op- opioid uh, <laughs> butthole that's relax. Stuff, that's stuff constipates. Oh, it does. Uh, just what what would make your butthole just loose? release release <clears throat> cocaine with baby laxative in it? Yeah, there you, there you go. go. Oh, um, the bouncers the came thing. running to block the stage. The show must go on. That's I'm sure that's how they looked at it. They the show the, must, I, I guarantee I, they left the music. Oh, the music's gone. Apparently, it was the after effects of something she had just done in the back room with a customer. Oh my goodness gracious! Oh boy, the cinnamon roll. Stop it, my dear God! <laughs> Come on. Sorry, but that's that's no good. 
It's no good. Oh, my God. In high school, my mother ran an escorting service. Mm. Huh. Your mom was a madam. You learn a lot about mom that day. Mm-hmm. And they generally have been around the block a few times themselves. Well, I almost feel like a, a madam generally is someone who's gone through the business and realized I can kind of look out for some up and coming prospects. I met my girlfriend at her job, which was a sex shop. I left her a card saying, if you're single, text me. Two years later, here we are. Uh, beautiful. <laughs> That's She's bold. For someone to actually text that person back who left their card at the sex shop? I think I think that's the kind of girl that's working there. They're oh, open that, to, yeah. you know, wild times. You yeah, don't meet a lot of librarians that are like in there and not up to no. anything, you know? Um, I'm a guy, worked at a porn store, crazy stuff. Uh, lesbian asked me to try a strap-on on for her. Sure. Had to get a nurse arrested because she went nuts after not being able to return used underwear. Like a naughty nurse or a regular nurse? I think a regular nurse. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to tell. I can't it's hard tell to with tell. that story. Like, yeah. what are we talking? Sexy nurse? <laughs> what was she in? Real nurse. <laughs> I would short. assume a real nurse. I would assume a real nurse. I, th- I think. I hope. It seems like if you have an argument with someone these days, the best way to just settle it is run them over with your vehicle. Oh, it's uh, one way. A, it's one way. Thing. It happens over and over again. Um, this latest one in Pittsburgh, they were having like an altercation at a gas station, mm-hmm. these guys. And the guy just decided, well, that's enough. I'm just going to I'm just going to run you right over. Yeah. Here's the story from CBS Pittsburgh. Take a listen. According to North Huntington Police, the two men are total strangers to each other. And they first got into an argument at a motel just down the street. But then it continued to this sheets right here along Route 30. Officers say Alan Israel got into an argument with the victim at the Huntington Inn Motels. Oh but it didn't end there. They say the two men later ran into each other at this sheets and continued arguing. Then as the victim was leaving the store, police say Israel hit him with his Jeep. When the victim was hit, he was hit hard enough that he actually launched into the air and came back down and hit the ground pretty hard. Officer Troy Piscina responded to the incident just after 8.30 in the morning. He spoke with the victim, who somehow was not injured. If that driver would have continued over and ran him over fully, it would have been serious injuries. After speaking with the victim, investigators checked the surveillance video of the incident. Look at how many cameras. The victim was walking in a handy parking spot when Israel backed his Jeep out of another parking spot, hit the accelerator, slowed down, And then ran into the victim and took off. It was definitely not an accident. And as officers were on the scene speaking with the victim, Israel came back and parked nearby. The victim identified Israel to investigators. However, Israel first told the officers this was all an accident. And when I did say to him that I did watch the video, he didn't have much to say. He just said, okay. And then at that point, cooperated fully at that point. Israel is currently in the Westmoreland County Jail on $50,000 bond. He faces charges of aggravated assault, recklessly endangering another person, as well as reckless driving. He has a preliminary hearing scheduled for June 15th. You guys, this must be in the shadiest part of Pittsburgh. Look at all the cameras all over the building. There is one, two, three, four, five. We can't see what's behind it. Is it it. all around the building, though? Nine, ten. Yeah, there's everywhere. There are eight cameras in a row on on one side of the building. On one side. In one small wall. I've never yeah. seen so many cameras on one wall in my life. Pointed at every possible direction. This must be one of the shadiest neighborhoods in town. Well, a guy just literally ran a man over. <laughs> sent him flying. <laughs> my God. Um, but for sure, they have it on camera. Oh, like, that's oh, 100%. Oh, they've don't got ever it. Oh, yeah. do anything yeah. wrong at Sheets. No. 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 I've never heard of a Sheets. Sheets gas maybe... station, I think, is a no, chain. Okay. I like so, the name. Yeah, holy yeah. sheets. <laughs> yeah, that's the no. first thing I thought. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, they're a convenience store company. I'm sure if they're but a- boy, oh boy, they have it on lockdown at Sheets. Yeah, they do. <laughs> that's a lot of cameras. They're based out of Pennsylvania, but they're in Ohio too. Okay. But Sheets takes it seriously. <laughs> yeah. I just I'll I'll never forget when I did it was one of my very last sort of gas station events I would have had to do 
and I was at a, a gas station up north here and we had they would give us like five t-shirts to give out and we were there for like four hours and a guy came up and was like give me a shirt and I was like hey man oh, we just gave the shirt away for this uh you know half hour we I'm not giving anything away he went back to his car revved it up sped and then slammed on the brakes and came within about three inches of hitting our whole display. What? Um, like he threatened to ram us over a crappy radio over, station. Over just radio not station giving him a, a radio station shirt. Did and you then, give it to him? I'm no, like, Jesus. Okay, half hours up. Here no, you go. no, he he did that. He, I mean, it screeching tires. Like came to a a stop. Like slid almost sideways. Stopped right before the table, and then he backed up and took off. He really and we, wanted we, that shirt. I was like, you are an imbecile. Call the police, baby. Yeah, I mean, what are we going to do? He That's probably crazy. did take some free stuff. Okay. Yeah, no, I think I, I did. I, I believe I told it before, but it, it's um, it. it was one of the scariest moments of like any kind of... I was like, wow, I'm serious. Like, I seriously You're, you're about to die died. in a gas station parking lot yeah, over a radio right. station That's, t-shirt. Oh, yeah, like a $3 That's, shirt. That I, I know, of course, we didn't want to go. Like, oh, there's, there's no not, way no. I would have no. ever wanted to go to this no. thing. <laughs> no. I mean, and honestly, no one... Ca- they, it, it was so far up oh my God, that I don't were. think that they could even hear... What? Like, I don't think they really got to... It was like... Not what? Our, I, I remember driving an hour and a half to get to one of those each yeah. way. Yeah. And I was so, like, so, I don't think you can even get our station but it's like on your radio sales rep at the like, time. Okay, you up there? All right. Sure. Yeah, listen, it's a deal with the 7-Eleven. So dumb. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have four shirts, what, every half hour? Oh, my God. That's the way it was. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yep. God. Here's awful. your map quest so map so you can find it. <laughs> <laughs> Good so luck. then you'd have to have people just wait with you beside the table for half an hour until you did the next shirt draw. Yeah. <sighs> and like, so it's me oh. and it's like, you know, two or three other people that they would as- assign you that day. Like some people, right. it's like their first time they're ever doing anything for free for a radio station. They almost get killed that day. Uh, a woman has revealed how she lucky. busted her boyfriend cheating with a hooker. Hmm. It was all thanks to his smartwatch. Here's a little bit of the video here that she played. This TikToker didn't reveal what made her look through his smartwatch messages, but oftentimes people have a gut feeling that their partners may be up to no good. So she she decided to look through the messages on his watch and was left heartbroken. She found multiple messages to different women with her partner telling them he wished they were in his bed. And then she said she caught him cheating on her with several sex workers as well. And she showed one of the messages he'd been sending to women. Um, So he is like, okay, oh, well, something else is playing. We'll just turn it off. Uh, So here, your inquiry from, whore, (laughs) what are your rates and are you available on Thursday night? Oh, that's a terrible message to find. <laughs> that's a terrible message to find. What are your rates? Mm. And then I would be like, I am. I was trying to get a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> Thursday night plumbing. From Susie's horse? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, whatever that says up there, that's know, like, it's, it's all blocked, blocked out. out. Yeah. What are it might have been the. I didn't know you just t- texted prostitutes. I mean, I guess. Depending on whatever, if it's in, uh, if you're one of their clients, yeah. If you're, yeah, to me, if you've got their text number, yeah. Wow, oh, that's an advanced operation, though. I would think that's. Not I think a that Craigslist. On, I think on Craigslist like sometimes it'll give the like you can't put a phone number, but you can do that weird like you put a four and then you spill out one and then you, you know, like you oh, can't. Okay. There's ways around it, I think, for this. Uh, you don't want to see no, no, that your partner was booking a hooker. But you know what's great? That you found it, and you can get the hell out of there. Download Dave and Chuck the Freak's Tasty Bits podcast on iTunes or Google Play. Leave a rating for Dave and Chuck the Freak's Tasty Bits podcast on iTunes or Google Play. Up next, a story. I thought stuff like this only happens in movies. I've never heard it actually happening to anyone in real life. What's it called? Commandeering a vehicle? So that's what it's called. Oh, yeah, term, yeah. Right? Yes. Where police, yep. like, take your car. We need your car. Right? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. 
it just happened to someone, but with their boat. But this guy kind of, they were, they at first wanted this guy to take them out on his boat so they could catch a guy who stole a jet ski. Okay. But the guy ended up just giving the cops his boat to go out on the water. Oh, man. To get this guy. Uh, cops in Florida called to the intercoastal waterway. Someone reported their jet ski had been stolen. Police arrived on the scene. They spotted the guy floating out in the distance, but realized they had no access to a boat. They needed a ride. So they asked a dude who was preparing to go out on the water with his kid, and he said, you guys can just take it if you want. They pulled up to the guy on the jet ski with their guns drawn, demanded the guy come to the boat. Here's the problem. He didn't know how to swim. Oh, no. Uh, Oh, no. 48-year-old guy Ronald Williams one, didn't know how to operate the jet ski, so he ended up just floating on it. And he told the cops that he couldn't get to them because he didn't know how to swim. If you don't know how to operate a jet ski, I mean, is that the easiest why did you, thing? Why are you stealing it? Yeah, that's funny. Mm-hmm. Just pull the thing back. Right? Here's the body cam footage. We got a guy down here that's trying to steal a jet ski. He's on the he's on the jet ski in the river. Is there any way you could take a couple of us down there to him? Sure, sure. Okay. You want to you want to take the boat? You take it, come back. He's willing to let us use the boat. You you can. I know you got lots of boating experience. So they're on the boat now, heading out towards this guy on the jet ski, who's who's literally just floating. Hey, right here, Sheriff's office. Sheriff's office! Put your oh hands boy. up! Got serious real quick, yeah. huh? Come over here! Sorry, I can't Come swim. over here! <laughs> what? Swim! <laughs> so you're gonna take a jet ski and you don't know how to swim! Yeah, line. Don't tie it off. Hey, next plane comes flying. Look at here. Look, I'm tossing you this rope. Tie it to the front of the jet ski. Okay, just where's the I'm. Do you have any weapons on you? Take this line. This guy is an absolute what is guns, knives, anything. What has this guy done? Life of bad decisions. I'm Sergeant Turner, by the way. How you doing? Okay. Sergeant Turner. I'm Sergeant Turner, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Y'all be great. Yeah, I would have been like. Let's go, boys! Oh, you would have wanted to have been part of the chase. Yeah. I don't blame the until guy for the, not wanting to go. Until yeah. the bullets start flying. Yeah, let's go, yeah, go, go, go. Like, it's all cool until <laughs> you know, you're know you in a scene of Miami Vice. <laughs> Hop in, boys! I thought that was something from like movies, and like they, I don't, I don't know if they can do it like they do in the movies. If you were just like at a like a stop, yeah, sign. like wave you down right. and force yeah. you out. Of That's your what car. I'm saying. Could they take it like? We're taking over the car. Yeah, I don't know if they can. Yeah, they almost like it was ever. like they were asking to use the boat. <laughs> Oh, yeah, because at first it was just like, hey, can you just even drive us out there? I'm not handing over my car to cop chase. A police officer has the full authority to commandeer your vehicle if they need to, with emphasis on need. Officers may only request to control the civilian vehicle if the vehicle is a necessity, which means imminent or substantial danger to a person, the community, or the officer. And then what happens, though? I guess they don't get into that in the movies if they, like, your car gets destroyed. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Like they the don't insurance. pay for it, like that. Well, I guess your your insurance would do it. I guess. What but. if there's a clause in your insurance about your vehicle being taken by the cops? Jesus. It probably is in there somewhere. You think so? I don't know. I mean, does this happen to people? I've never heard of this okay. ever happening. It's Here we go. So rare. We bet there's no one listening that has had their vehicle commandeered. Yeah, I don't think there is by an officer of the law. There probably isn't. I mean, they cops now, they've got their own tanks. They've got their own, you know, like everybody's got a tank. Everybody's Backup got. cars. If by chance you or someone you know has had their vehicle commandeered by the police, you can reach out. Prove us wrong. 1-855-954-6969. Toll free. 1-855-954-6969. Or text us at 46969. Would you? You're driving out here. You don't have a cho- you don't have and a, a choice. And a police officer says, "I need your vehicle." You don't have a choice. Like, were you going to go to jail that day? Because you Can don't you give go it to, to him? jail. Uh, don't hand your keys over just yet. Civilian cars don't include sirens and additional safety measures to alert other pedestrians. 
An officer may not use your vehicle in a chase for liability reasons. The good news is if the officer does damage your vehicle in a chase, you or your car insurance company won't be liable. Okay. That's good. There you go. I'd be just... That'd be the ultimate chuck luck for me. (laughs) I pull up to some stop sign just to stop and the police chase rolls through and someone needs my car. People are calling. Uh, We do have a police officer who says he's had to commandeer a vehicle twice. Come on. That's what he says. As a firefighter, I have commandeered a kayak to get Mm. to someone in the water. Give me your kayak! (laughs) Took a bit to get there, but he got there. That'd be me. I'd be, said. I'd be kayaking somehow, tr- tricked into kayaking. All right. Well, let's see if okay. this has happened to people. Scott, we bet there's no one listening that has had their vehicle commandeered by police. No, nope, I got one for you. Okay. Sunday night, Sunday night dinner at my house in Marblehead. It was uh, like 1989, 1990, something like that. And a car got stolen in Chelsea, which was about 20 miles from where I live. And police had been chasing them for about two and a half hours, and they got him into my neighborhood. And a bike cop commandeered a car right in front of my house to chase him onto a dead-end street. So this is a cyclist. A cop. cyclist who realized he needed a vehicle, an actual vehicle. Yes, exactly right. You know, they'd been chasing him for two and a half hours. Wow. Man, I... Awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, it is like a movie. It but. totally is like a movie. Everything's um, cool until it's your car. Though. I know, I know. I had an off-duty cop I picked up that had me take him to a crime scene while his car was in the shop. Someone said. Hmm. So, like, a cop can just flash their badge, stop you, and be like, you need to drive me what to I, the station. What I want to know, though, is what happens if you say no. You're dead. Like, can you be charged? I don't think they'll charge you, but I think they'll take the car, is what that paragraph pretty much says. They they have the ability to. So, but if yeah. I keep driving, so like, that's what you mean, like if you pull the <laughs> James able to reverse. Yeah, if, if you pull the James and you would just like put your hand up, like you can't hear them and keep yeah, going. That's got to be some kind of. It's got to be something. Uh, uh, someone said my father in law and his friend had their boat commandeered on the Detroit River. As they had police looking for a potential drowning victim. So they did commandeer someone's boat. Hmm. Um, Matt, you've heard of this. Hey, Matt. Yeah. Go ahead, man. All right. So uh, this was probably back in the 90s. I was a teenager. Um, Me and my buddy were spray painting an overpass over I-69. We seen a state officer down on the expressway, and we actually kind of like waved, you know, whatever. Well, he pulled over, and he walked up the side of like the overpass to come and get us well we had took off on foot my buddy wanted to go through the woods but i was a chubby kid so i was like no we're just gonna keep walking down the road yeah well the cop finally got up to the top of the overpass and he stopped a car that had passed us and had the car drive him to us where he picked us up uh had us had our parents come and get us everything Oh, wow. So he found, like, there was a passing motorist, and because his car was parked on the highway, right? he just flagged someone down, and then they chased you down. There was no escape. <laughs> <laughs> How about this one? I got my semi-truck commandeered by police to help break the fall of a suicidal man oh, well, jumping you've seen, off a bridge. Oh, that's yeah, interesting, because that. we've seen that a few times where all the trucks get lined up. And you're like, oh, look at that. That's so cool. And I never thought, oh, it's the cops that did that. I always assumed, oh, it's just the truck drivers got together. No. So it's probably the cops are like, no, you have to do this. Yes, I never knew they did that. Yeah, I've seen it a couple times. Still feel like it'll injure the man landing on a truck. Well, the truck's so high up and they'd have to get in between. Not if you don't want. If you know how to land, right? Um, <laughs> Gary in Fort Myers. Good morning. Good morning. You've had this happen. You've had a police officer commandeer your vehicle. A detective uh, from the Newark Police Department. I was up there with two friends in a standard cab Nissan pickup. I stopped at a Wawa. I had let one of the passengers out. He went to do what he had to do. He, myself and his girlfriend were sitting in the vehicle. All of a sudden. 
cops started running towards my truck, and they said, we know what you're doing. And I said, well, whatever. You know, what are you going to do? We got nothing. And uh, he proceeded to say, move over. I thought he was kidding, you know. And then he got louder and louder, and he started cursing. And he said, move the bleep over. So I moved the bleep over. So the next thing I know, we're driving at like 70 miles an hour, going up uh, a two-lane road, chasing somebody. He just stopped. He jumped. He got out of the truck and jumped and started running after someone. So I sat there for a couple minutes. He got back in the truck, drove us back to the wall and let us go. So... Oh wow! So, so you he, were in it during yeah, the chase. Like they, he didn't say I was like. In it, man, he slid me into the middle of the seat. It was just a little bench seat, man. A little Nissan pickup. Oh man, I would have. I would have <laughs> thought they'd say, "Please get out get in out, case right. I crash your car." Like I don't want to hurt Turn you guys. You know. oh. It was mm. wild. Yeah, I'm sure, it would be quite a rush. I mean, maybe I think. It would be quite a rush, and I'd probably be like, slow it down! Yeah. Slow it down! Oh my God, slow it down! Dave. We've Man, seen Dave on a track. Right. Oh, my God, officer, please! <laughs> God, slow down! What are we going, 72? <laughs> oh, man! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, there's a turn! There's a turn! Uh, <laughs> he'd wish he didn't commandeer your vehicle. Uh, yep. Jesus, you're getting your boot dirt all over my clean mess. <laughs> yep. Um, Jeff's in Livonia. Hi, Jeff. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. What's your thought on this? Well, I had an incident one time or a couple years ago at uh, Ludington State Park, and uh, it had uh, trouble with a lot of rain, so the water was real deep, and they had already a few drownings that weekend. Mm. And we were in the inland lake and uh, pulling the boat out, and there was a DNR there, and he asked us to stop and so he could get a ride all the way out to the Lake Michigan. So he'd go look for this guy that was just drowned. And I had to let him jump in the back of the boat. And we had to speed through the state park, honking the horn and telling people to get out of the way. It's pretty uh, dramatic. And we made it to Lake Michigan there, and he got out, and he took one of my kids' uh, boogie boards that we just bought and went out there searching for the guy that, you know, went underwater. So, and they didn't find him for two days. Oh, wow. Oh, but yeah. you got that boogie board back or no? No, they didn't give it back. Oh, no. it. oh yeah, wow. We tried, we tried looking into office, you know, thought maybe he'd turn it in, but no. So. That was the end of that. I mean, yeah. Yeah, generally only about 10 bucks. Yeah, it's the, just the yeah. little styrofoam yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the big of a lot. Yeah, yeah. no. no. Um, another police officer said he had to also commandeer a kayak in the dead of the Detroit River because a car drove right into the river and was floating away. He said, I managed to save the lady. It was all over the news. Oh. You know, it seems like they're going to take your boat way more often than they're going to take your car. You know, you it really, does. I think because they're not ready for any sort of yeah, like, right. Water I've stuff. really mm-hmm. changed my ideas. If I ever had a boat of where I would go, be hanging out fishing. I wouldn't be hanging out where lots of pe- crimes happen, cops, like yeah. where cops are around. <laughs> this guy says bigger question: Will they fill my tank back up though? Gas expensive. <laughs> oh no, I don't. I doubt it. <laughs> I had an officer that was doing traffic, and a guy ran through the stop sign while kids were crossing the street. He called it in while walking towards my car and said he needed to use it. He took off in it, and an hour later, he came back. I had a full tank of gas and no damage to my car. Oh, that's nice. They caught the guy about five blocks away. He was super drunk. The- mm. We bet there was no one listening. Oh, we, yeah, were no, we were it's wrong. So, uh, one more here, so and a little different. Mike in Boston talking about police being able to commandeer your vehicle. Your story is a little bit different, we hear. A little bit different, yes. Yeah, so my mother-in-law just outside of Milwaukee owns a bunch of acreage. Guy robs a liquor store, and he runs up her driveway trying to get away from two or three cops in cars. He runs into the property. The cops get out of the cars. They commandeered her horses and chased after him into the property because they could lose him. I mean, that'd be it. He'd be gone. And they were made off. So they took her horses. They knew her and went after her. Didn't even ask. They just grabbed it, saddled, gone. Wow. They didn't even ask. Nope. Yeah, nope. I mean, they'll just do it, right? They'll just do it. They just took the horses and off they went. Yeah. All right. There you go. Other stories. Cops took my drone to look for a missing person. I did get it back. Ta- cops took my buddy's tube while on the lake. <laughs> <laughs> 
they needed it to carry a drunk girl out of the lake. The, so they weren't like tubing down. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah they yeah. were just getting some. cop in his full gear. It'd be funny if they commandeered those like jetpack things. Oh, yeah. Like that. I just needed to rescue somebody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Recreational water jetpacks. Oh, yeah. I'd be, if I was a cop, I'd be like commandeering all the cool stuff I saw. Mm. Sorry, I need that for a minute. And someone had their four-wheeler taken by a cop that needed it in a chase. Yeah, it's just you don't uh, expect to have stuff happen by the way, this around you. At least this is uh, Al has a cop buddy, and he said that you can say no. Oh, Right, I mean, you're, oh you're, yeah, Lisa's like, thank you. <laughs> no, 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 not mine. No, actually, no, his. sorry, if you could maybe go to the yeah, next yeah. Goal. yeah. <laughs> I am not letting you have this. Yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, I would just, I, I'd, I'd be so nervous. I took my car and they're like, I'm sorry, but your car was flipped, and then a semi truck hit it. We do have a cop that did this. Ed in Boston, you had to commandeer a vehicle. Well, yeah, I'm not in Boston, but I'm in Weymouth. Okay. okay. So what so, happened? Yeah, we had a com- we had a commandeer vehicle. I was a uh, canine officer at the time, and uh, we're tracking through the uh, the urban woods of uh, another town. And as we uh, were getting alerted to the uh, a witness of the person breaking into another house that was down the street. We commandeered a truck. We put myself and canine and another officer in the back of the truck. Drove down to a um, another location. Jumped out, time. pursued, and caught the uh, bad guy breaking into the house. So you got yeah. it. You commandeered. You got him. And then what do you do with the car when it's done? You fill it up, drive it back, oh, or you just drive it back? I think the driver was so excited he got to get in, involved in uh, helping the police. That, uh, he just uh, said, okay, thank you. and On his way. Let him drive. Oh, oh he drove. Wow. Oh, yeah. Damn, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what yeah, Dave wants. Yeah, that's, that's what, what you Dave need. wants. Get in, boys. Yeah. Unlimited speed. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You'd be the wrong guy, though, Dave. Oh, no, Because you know all it. the traffic rules. Because you imagine, you're like, go get him. He's like, I'm sorry, <laughs> but the posted speed <laughs> is 55. I, I never <laughs> catch him. I'm not. <laughs> it says we've got a yield, boys. Yeah, <laughs> hold on, <laughs> hold on. This is a yield. This is a yield. This is a yield. Okay, hold on. Let me just take. Okay, we can proceed with caution, I believe. Oh, yellow, yellow. I don't know. I'm slowing, it's, slowing it down. That's it a yellow. says, uh, I got to be honest, guys. It's a, it's a solid line. I can't pass this guy. I'm sorry. Well, we're stuck behind him for a while. I know this it. is. Uh, this guy's just hauling some farm stuff, but we're going to be here for a while, it appears. I'll, I'll just never forget being in the in a car with Lisa and us flying. Lisa is driving. It is on a racetrack, flying, and we are coming up on another car, and we realize it's Dave. He's got his indicator on, and he's, has, he's waving. Just go around me. Go around. <laughs> and Lisa just passed him like he was standing still. Oh, uh, whatever. I didn't want to damage the vehicle with my intense speeds. <laughs> We were yep. at a racetrack. We <laughs> were at a racetrack. Oh, he had an like, indicator on. <laughs> I was about to, to pull turn. over. I was to merging. Pull over. Merging. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. I wanted to make sure you guys knew it was I was unbelievable. merging. It was unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> go, go. <laughs> Just go. <laughs> Lisa was like setting track records on that <laughs> thing. Oh, I didn't boy. want to cause any trouble that yep. day. No. Was, <laughs> I've got oh, a feel for it. I got the need for speed. I would absolutely love Dave to be in a cop chase and have it like GoPro'd. <laughs> Oh, me too. Uh, all on Dave. Me oh, too. My be the best. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! It would be crazy. It really would. I just, you know what? I would really, really hate is if they weren't wearing their seatbelts. <laughs> <laughs> and I kept yeah. hearing that horrible <laughs> guys. <laughs> I can't. I can't concentrate with all the beeping. It's like my kids are in the car. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Put your seatbelts on. <laughs> 
Buckle up, We're boys. Gonna, you guys, I can't. I can't. No. Oh, my God. God that's Gosh, just... darn it. I can't listen to that anymore. I won't do I'm it. I'm going to pull this over if you guys don't put the belts on. <laughs> he writes them a citation. Exactly. <laughs> Citizens arrest. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Pulling it over. Hold on. Let me merge and indicate. Hold on. Hold on. It's a safe place to stop. <laughs> Oh man! Oh, yep. oh goodness! Nope. It's just uh, like if if I wanted to chase someone down, I would just throw Lisa the keys. I'd be like, "Go yeah. get him, Lisa!" <laughs> like I, she'd catch somebody, yeah. pit maneuver them. I'll pull up the rear, Lisa. I'll be yeah. right behind yeah. you. Yeah, Dave will be here in a few more minutes, Lisa. He's coming. He says he's on his way. I'm tracking him right now. He's he's 14 miles behind us. He left 12 minutes ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where the hell is she? Jesus. Yeah. Lost sight of her immediately. Thanks for checking out the Dave and Chuck the Freak Tasty Bits podcast. If you want to hear the entire Dave and Chuck the Freak show from today, subscribe and download the podcast now from the Apple Podcast app or the Google Play Store.